An anthropologist proposed a game to children of an African tribe. He put a basket of fruit near a tree and told the children that the first one to reach the fruit would win them all. When he told them to run, they all took each other's hands and ran together, then sat together enjoying the fruit. When asked why they ran like that, they said, Ubuntu. How can one of us be happy if all the others are sad? Ubuntu is a philosophy of African tribes that can be summed up as I am because we are. Working with communities and schools to improve the lives of all children. Welcome to Lunch Bunch Community Forum. I'm Nancy Sylvester, board president for Ask for More of Jackson. We invite you to join us and bring your friends to any of the activities that we have. For those of you who may not be familiar with Ask for More of Jackson, which was formerly Parents for Public Schools of Jackson, the organization was founded in 1989. Our work centers around supporting parents as partners with schools in education of their children, ensuring that all children have access to quality teaching and learning, and engaging the public in active support of public schools. As for more, Jackson is a long-standing critical partner with Jackson Public Schools and works with the district as we work with communities and schools to improve the lives of all children. As for more, Jackson has adopted the African philosophy of Ubuntu. At its core, Ubuntu is best described as, I am because we are. The Ask for More Board of Directors are dedicated community members, many of whom who work for JPS in some capacity for many years. All of the Ask for More Board members are long-term supporters of JPS, the city of Jackson, and most importantly, the children and families we serve. We do appreciate what they do. Also, I'd like to recognize the Ask for More team members. Uh, Carolyn Jolivet's not present today. She serves as executive director. But Gwen Garner, who's the principal in residence. Edie Graham is our operations program manager. And Athea Johnson, our parent engagement consultant. And then there are other amazing individuals and entities who support and guide the work that we do. Every year, Ask for More Jackson, in partnership and through the generosity of the Community Foundation of, for Mississippi, has the honor and privilege of recognizing outstanding educators in Jackson Public Schools. Annually, these honorees are selected from nominees submitted by principals from across the district. Finalists are selected through an anonymous process by community members from different backgrounds who score the submissions. We are joined today by Jackie Bailey of the Community Foundation of Mississippi, who will assist in presenting the 2018 Outstanding Educators Awards. The Community Foundation for Mississippi, which used to be the Community Foundation of Greater Jackson. I don't know how many of you know, but in March, we expanded our footprint to include 19 counties in the central Mississippi area that were previously not covered by a community foundation. And at the same time, we moved into our new offices at 119 South President. So please stop by if you're ever walking down the sidewalk. We're very happy to be street level and much more visible than we were before. We changed our name to the Community Foundation for Mississippi. But the story of our partnership with Parents for Public Schools at the time was um, we had donors who supported public education. And in the year 2000, they set up a fund at the Community Foundation, the Outstanding Educator Awards Fund, to add a monetary award to the money that Parents for Public Schools was already giving to this teacher recognition award. And so since the year 2000, we have participated my name is Rhoda Byler Yoder. I'm the principal at Casey Elementary, and with me today is an outstanding educator, Yoshonda Trotter. It only took a moment for my foot to get over the threshold of Casey Elementary four years ago as a new principal to recognize that this very tall lady was 
was one of the ones that immediately would stand out in my, in my notice and that my admiration for her would only grow. We're a building of outstanding educators. I'm so proud of the staff at Casey Elementary. Um, there are numerous people that I want to nominate and will nominate. This woman is there every day working for the children, and I invite you any day with no advance notice to come and see Yashonda Trotter in her fifth grade English language arts classroom. You will find whatever the district has asked to be posted is posted. Her lesson plans are going to be there open on her desk. Her first thing that she does is she teaches children. Now she loves her English, but she loves her children first and foremost, and that is the way that's one of the things it takes to be a great teacher. She's very personable with them. She's just on it with um, the relationships, with recognizing getting to know each one as they come through her door each day. She knows she's still teaching elementary children. You will find them on her carpet in front of the Promethean board where she's showing a great poem and talking about it. And then they'll be broken up into their groups. They'll be doing peer tutoring. They'll be doing group work, they'll be rotating through centers while she pulls several at a time to work directly with them. So she knows she's teaching children and she knows and loves language arts. But she knows how to take any new play by Shakespeare and pull out all those objectives that are on her district pacing guide, all the reading, the writing, the speaking, the listening, the great vocabulary, tie it together, character analysis, motivation. She knows how to pull the arts in. We are an arts integrated school and she knows how to do that. Later throughout the year, she balances out all her selection of complex texts. She has students doing Up From Slavery, Frederick Douglass, which is really more of a high school, high school book, but she wants them to be exposed to those kinds of ideas as well. You know, all of us principals, we love it when we don't have to ask twice for things and we never have to see someone coming in late. But Ms. Trotter, she's just never late. She comes in every morning. Through the, through the cafeteria door, because that's the only door that's unlocked when she wants to come in. She's that early. Um, and she's going to be there. If I've asked for something to be turned in, I'm never at her door holding out my hand, you know, the day after the deadline, asking where it is. It's up in the office, turned in as requested. <laughs> so she not only has the teaching together, she has all those structural pieces you know, it's really, I know that all of you know how hard it is to be a really good teacher, a really great teacher. There's such a wide array of skills that are needed. And most of us, we, we know and love our teachers and know that they may be missing a few skills somewhere, um, but uh, somehow this one just pulls them all in there. She's very humble about her skills. She will not put herself out in the spotlight. Um, and she's a great team player. Her family could not come to celebrate with her, which she regretted. She has a wonderful family. But who did she want to bring? Her team. The rest of the fifth grade team, uh, Beth Williamson and Vanessa Dean, when her name was announced, and like I said, there could be many outstanding educators at Casey, everybody was thrilled for her. She has, everybody loves Miss Trotter. When I grow up, I want to be just like Miss Trotter. First and foremost, I have to give credit to God because everything I do is all because of him, including entering the teaching profession. I tried for years to not be a teacher. I turned down two full ride scholarships to law school. And some days when I get frustrated with paperwork, I'll say, you know, maybe I should have been an attorney after all. But that's just talk because I wouldn't want to be anywhere else doing anything else in the world. And secondly, it's just like she said, I'm a part of a great team. I can't take credit. We are a great team at Casey, and I'm just happy to be a member of the choir instead of the lead singer. I am Carla Thomas, principal of Clausel Elementary School. Latoya Blackshear, the former principal of Clausel Elementary School, the Clausel. Let me make sure we put that out there. And we are here to introduce Miss Carrie Chaddock, fourth grade math teacher, fourth grade exceptional math teacher at the Claudel Elementary School. And actually it's an honor that we recognize her today because when I met her three years ago, she was such a hard worker then. And I've always told her that I want your data to follow and show up in your hard work. She didn't complain when I offered suggestions. Um, she said, okay, what do I need to do? 
She gave up many Saturdays and Sundays to plan her lesson, to review her activities, to ensure that it was differentiated for all of her students. I can't say enough about her. I can go on and on. She volunteers timelessly every day to help her colleagues, stepped in to work with area two fourth grade teachers. So it just gives me great honor and pleasure to share her with everyone else and everyone now finally see what great person, the dedication that she has to her students. And we're just so thankful and proud to call her one of our 2018 Outstanding Educators. First and foremost, teaching is not a job. It is a calling. It is a calling that, give, that comes from God. Uh, I had this calling starting when I was in third grade. And through college, I never changed my major. I continued to um, pursue education and teaching. Started out rough, as we all have those first years. And it's taken me 15 years to get to where I am. And a larger part of who I am now as a teacher is because of Ms. Blackshear. For the last three years, she has guided me and trained me and mentored me to understand data, how to analyze it, how to utilize it, and just to re really use that to help my scores show. And uh, when it comes to my students, one thing I tell my students every day is I love you. Because I read a study once that not every child in America hears the phrase I love you every day. So if you ever, ever see a student from Clausell who happened to have me, you can ask them what's the one thing Ms. Chaddock always told them, and that was I love you. And one of my biggest goals as a teacher every year is to motivate my students and do things for them that they've never had anyone do for them before. Trips to high heaven, go eat CeCe's pizza, rewarding them for doing well on a district test, state test, even giving them money. Because it, and it shows they, they love being rewarded for anything and everything they do that's positive, not just always the negative consequences that they may receive at home or at school. But I am definitely honored to be up here with my old principal and my new principal and to be honored as a 2018 Outstanding Educator. You know, I don't do the job for recognition. If I did, I would be a celebrity or somebody. But I do this because <laughs> I, love, I love my students and I love my job. And hopefully this will be another 15 more years of being able to interact with children, teach them math, because that's, you know, to me, math is universal. That's, that's my passion. But thank you all very much for allowing me to continue to do my job that I love so much. I am Ms. Tory, principal of Span Elementary. It is my pleasure to introduce to you all our outstanding educator, um, Mr. Richard Jones. He is the son of Richard Jones Sr. and Cheryl Hike. Mr. Jones graduated from Houston High School. He received his B.S. degree in elementary education from Millsaps. He furthered his studies with a master's and a specialist degree from Mississippi College. Mr. Jones is the model of what an exemplary teacher should be. He helps children see their potential and their greatness by creating a love and a learning environment for their ability and their background. Evidence of this is not only visible in the classroom, but in the additional contributions that he does to Span Elementary by working with ELL students, our gifted students, and any students that have intervention needs. When asked by one student why they love going to Mr. Jones' class, she simply responded, she is thankful for what he's done. When we don't understand something, he reteaches it. He makes sure that we do our best. Some of his accomplishments are Metro Teacher of the Year, PBIS Teacher of the Quarter, he is also a presenter for the Mississippi Reading Association, and he is a Junior League grant recipient. But on top of all of that, Mr. Jones is like the wind beneath our wings at Span. He is always this poised, even with, <laughs> even with his students and even when I'm not. He is always calm, um, but he is always teaching. Anytime you enter his class, he is teaching. Um, a week ago, I walked in his class, and there was a desk knocked over. There were footprints all around the room. There was sand in the middle of the floor. And I said, oh, my goodness, who, who did this? But he was doing an escape room. He was doing an escape room lesson, and the students were so engaged. There was absolutely no talking. They were just talk, They were sharing with each other, and they were working. Um, he always has work posted. He always has a smile on his face. 
He races me to work down Lakeland Drive, but Mr. Jones is what SPAN Elementary represents. We are super proud. We really, really do appreciate you, and you do an awesome job for SPAN. When I began to think about what I should include in my speech in regards to this honorary occasion, I initially got writer's block. As I continued on with my daily activities, the song, This is a Man's World by James Brown, ironically came to my mind. I know what you all may be thinking. How can an R&B song from the Godfather of Soul fit into an honorary speech? This song acknowledges the life-enhancing adventures of men, basically saying men run the world because they invented things like cars, trains, and toys, but claims that it wouldn't mean anything without a woman or girl. This woman or girl James was referring to in one way or the other was instrumental in man's inventions. If I had the opportunity to talk with James Brown, I would tell him that this is not a man's world, but a teacher's world. Teachers run the world. We are instrumental in making this a man's world. We are the ones who mold students' lives and equip them with the knowledge to be able to read, write, think critically, and problem solve. This knowledge is more powerful than physical strength, and no great work can be done without knowledge. Knowledge is a powerful factor that empowers people to achieve great results. The more knowledge a person gains, the more powerful he becomes. To ask for more committee, thank you for acknowledging educators who truly make a difference in the lives of students. This rarely happens. Our reward usually comes many years later when we see students go on and succeed in life. To the SPAN administrators, I made one of the best decisions to leave the small town of Houston and to pursue my dreams. Thank you for seeing greatness in me. You believe that your teachers are the best and will put them up against any other teacher on any given day. Last but not least, to my SPAN colleagues, thank you for your continued support, words of encouragement, and listening to me when I need a shoulder to lean on. Thank you. Greetings from the Warrior Nation, Chestain Middle School, the largest middle school in Jackson Public School District. Uh, I serve as principal. I'm, I'm Harrison Michael. I'm here to... Uh, just give a little insight to our honoree today, Ms. Digra Whitney. Just looking at what outstanding means, um, synonyms like magnificent, superb, wonderful, exceptional, fabulous, and as young people would say, lit. Ms. Whitley is that. She is uh, not just a, a calm in a storm, but she can be a storm when she needs to be. And you need to have all facets of that when you're dealing with our children. You need to be able to take it up, but also be able to bring it down and love them all at the same time. Uh, what she does uh, that makes her uh, exceptional is that her, her, her far-reaching uh, chemistry and just attitude and personality, you can feel it flow through the building. You know, uh, last couple of days she's been out of the training, uh, you can tell when she's not there. That's when you know you're, you're, you're vital to the success of Chestain. She not only has served as uh, seventh grade English teacher. She's now um, been promoted to interventionist. She serves as a mentor teacher. She is the uh, director of our wonderful drill and dance team, cheerleader, sponsor, uh, and anything else that I need help with when I'm crying and have to meet deadlines for emails and paperwork. That is Miss Whitley. So today uh, we honor you, we congratulate you, and as a uh, biology and science major. I look forward to the advancements in science because if you can clone Ms. Whitley and put her in your school, it will be an A-level successful school. I am so humbled. Thank you so much. When those wonderful ladies came into Chestnut Middle School, I was sitting down painting. Mr. Michael was acting all weird. He had come in my classroom, picked up a piece of paper off the floor that someone had slid under the door. Miss Willie, does your intercom work with Miss Willie? Your name, you know, he was just, and I was getting him. He said, oh, no, just stay there. So I started painting. It's kind of therapeutic for me now. And um, I heard this wonderful voice come on the, the intercom. It sounded so angelic. And I'm serious. And I was just painting, and I heard my name. And I froze. And I said, did she say something about outstanding and teacher? And I was trying to connect all the words. And I sat there for a minute. So everybody in the meantime is wondering, where is Ms. Whitley? I don't know if 
it was Mr. Michael or somebody said, oh, she's crying. She's in there crying. And that's exactly what I was doing because I get so emotional when I think about it because one of the educators came up and said that it's a calling, and it is. Um, Ten years ago, I was called into education by God. And I was like, are you sure? I'm making good money right now, real good money. And um, I'm not ready to give that up right now, but I stepped out, <laughs> I stepped out on faith, and I, I began to advance my education. And um, I had already been, you know, dealing with kids and mentoring them and making sure um, that the children in the neighborhood had what they needed. And I said, okay, well, I just need to put this in, you know, some kind of uh, structure, some kind of form. And so when I went to interview, it was a breeze, but that first day of school was so scary to me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what did I sign up for? I was ready to go back to the law firm. I was ready to go back and, and type some paper, do, do somebody's hair or something. And teaching is just like every morning I wake up, I'm trying to get these eyebrows right because somebody messed them up. And so each morning I get up, I'm trying to make them twins, but I know that they're sisters and not twins. So I approach my career, my calling like that. Every night I go to bed, I have it on my mind. In the morning when I get up, I got to get these eyebrows right. So on the way to work, I, I pray. Pray for my students. I pray for my wonderful, I couldn't ask for a better administrator. Mr. Michael is motivating. Um, he encourages me. He taught me the difference between an emergency and a situation. Did you all know there was a difference between that? So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm all down the hall. He's like, hold up, stop, stop, stop. It's a situation. It's not an emergency. So I'm mastering that now. Thank you, Mr. Michael. And I want to thank my wonderful family for encouraging me. My aunt is here. My parents are here. And they are responsible, along with God's creation, for encouraging me along the way. And they, they are so happy for me, even when I don't realize that there's something to be happy for. So I just want to say thank you to Ask for More. I couldn't ask for a better situation right now. I am so stoked, so thrilled right now. I am elated to be here. I pray every morning. I reflect in the afternoon. Did I say enough? Did I do enough? Did I show enough? I love my students. And a long time ago when I decided to answer God's calling, one thing was in my mind, love. And every day I go to, to, to school, to, when I pull up, I have this in my mind. I have to let love lead in every situation. Because if I let love lead, I can make it. Even on the days that I feel like I'm about to pull my hair out, when it's a situation and not an emergency, I think about my eyebrows and I just get up and try it again. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm uh, Mr. Hampton, uh, lead teacher, instructional leader of the University of South Jackson, which is Forest Hill High School. Today I have this task to um, introduce the song and to all of you guys, an extraordinary educator. I remember when I first left the classroom myself and went to uh, Forest Hill as assistant principal, Ms. Moore was coming as a first-year teacher there. So now it's full circle. Returning back, uh, principal been there six weeks. First got in my office, acclimated. The first person I saw was Ms. Moore. I looked at the office. It was a painting that she and her scholars had done probably the previous year. I was like, we need to get that fixed. I was just saying it out loud. The next day, she and two of her scholars were in the main office painting the sign that I said that we need to get done. This type of person she is. She's been in education 14 years, five years uh, at Forest Hill High School. She was National Art Education Association, Mississippi Outstanding Art Educator for the year 2018. Also, the Bill Poyer Art Educator of the Year for the state of Mississippi, sponsored by the Mississippi Art Education Association for 2017-2018. When I tell you if you come to Forest Hill and you look around the campus, you will see her creations inside the building and outside the building. I'm going to leave you with this. We had a 9-11 tribute on yesterday. So we paid homage to... 9-11 and all the uh, fallen uh, people and they lost their lives 17 years ago. But around our commons area, we have artwork that's by our scholars. 
that is so amazing. That's so amazing. And that's what she is. She's amazing. So without further ado, Outstanding Educator Award for South Jacks. <laughs> for Seal High School. Miss Moore. When I was a senior in high school, my art teacher gave me an award for art education. And I looked at it, looked at him and went, what is this? <laughs> because to be honest, I was not planning on going into education. I always knew I wanted to have something to do with the arts field, but God kept taking something and hitting me over the head and saying, you have to be a teacher. And looking back at it, every time I turned around, it kept coming right back up in front of me. Um, you need to be a teacher. You need to be a teacher. And so I was my sophomore year of college at Mississippi College, and I ended up changing my major to art education. And I just remember the very first day of my student teaching, I had the biggest piece over everything, and I knew this is what I'm supposed to be doing. At that point, I, um, I ended up teaching for uh, about nine years when my father passed away, and he had been one of my biggest cheerleaders when it came to anything to do with my classroom. I did take some time off, and when I was ready to come back, I happened to just randomly receive a phone call from Forest Hill asking me if I wanted to come in for an interview for the art position. I decided to do it, came in, loved what I was hearing, and I found my home. Like, my scholars are some of the most amazing people you will ever meet. They make every day exciting for me to go to work. I feel it, it is a calling, like somebody said, it is a calling to be a teacher, but it just makes it even so much better when you walk in the classroom and those kids are just excited and they want to be in there and they want to, you know, improve their work. I tell them the first day, I'm not expecting you to become an artist one day. You know, I'm expecting you to take my class and learn to use it as a way to be a creative problem solver. When you go out in the world, no matter what your career is, you're going to be given a problem by your employer and you're going to have to solve it. And that's what art is about. It's coming in and creating a creative way to solve a problem. I wouldn't be here without my students and my amazing administrators that we have. And Forest Hill is great. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all, this was absolutely wonderful. Let's give them all another round of applause. Thank all of you all for being here to celebrate with us. We hope you will join us for any future forums that we'll have. Until then, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter and check our website for updates on the good news that's coming out of the schools in our community. Remember, we're working together to improve the lives of children. Thank you.